After the biggest week since the Australian Open, we had some massive points to give out and massive point changes to the rankings this week. And some big changes to the top 10 for the men and the women. Not only that, but to the race of the finals as well. Let's go have a look at the past results from last week. So starting in Qatar at the WTA 1000 event in Doha and Iga Swiatek wins her third trophy in a row at that venue, beating Alina Rabakina for the first time in a couple of years, 7662. And that was a huge boost to her ranking points, which keeps Sabalenka away from that number one spot. In Rotterdam, Yannick Sinner continues to win, beating Diminor in the final 7-5-6-4. That was the biggest tournament since the Australian Open as well. And of course, that's what Yannick Sinner won, so he's on a bit of a roll. Over in Argentina, we had Diaz Acosta taking out Jarry to win his first trophy of his career, 6-3-6-4, in one of the small events on clay during this February season. And then Delray Beach, we actually didn't have a result because the final is tomorrow. So Fritz versus Paul in that final, and that'll be tomorrow we'll get the result. All right, let's have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week, starting with Diaz Acosta going to a career high number 59 in the world, going up 28 spots higher than last week after winning his first trophy. Pavlyuchenkova continues to go up the rankings, another eight spots to 24 in the world after making the semifinals last week in Doha. And Naomi Osaka, she's gone up 461 spots to 286 in the world after making her first quarterfinal of her comeback. So a big boost for her. Unfortunately, not playing next week, but we will see her at the Sunshine Double, and hopefully she continue to rise. Players that went down in the rankings, Cam Norrie. Made a final last year on clay. Unfortunately, couldn't replicate that. Goes down three spots to number 23. Mackenzie McDonald goes down 12 spots to number 61. Also, because he couldn't replicate what he did last year in Delray Beach. And Belinda Bencic, she drops down eight more spots to number 44 in the world. And as I said last week, she's going to continue to drop. So we won't keep talking about her every single week because we know that her rankings really irrelevant at this stage while she's going to go have a baby. So she did drop eight spots this week due to the fact that she didn't have a chance to save the points that she lost from last year. All right, let's start on the WTA side of things now. And no change at the top with Fiontech staying at number one. Sabalenka at number two. Goff stays at number three with Rabakina at number four. Pagula at five with Jabur at six. Zhang at seven. And Von Drusseva at eight. But Maria Sakri dropping out of the top 10 for the first time in almost three years. Making way for Ostapenko, who is now at number 9 in the world, with Mukova staying at number 10. So, a big change there down the bottom. Penko having a great season, and now is back into the top 10. And we know how dangerous she can be, especially to those top 3 players. So, should be really interesting to see how she does now that she's back in the top 10. Looking at the race of the finals now, and things are starting to take shape. Sabalenka stays at number 1. But we do have a change with Rabakina going up to number 2, and Sviontek going up to number 3. After having a really good week last week, pushing Zhang, Ostapenko, Goff, Yastremska, Kazakina, and Noskova down in the race of the finals. Pavlyuchenkova jumps up to the number nine spot after having a really good week. And Kostyuk, she drops out of the top 10 completely, having only done well in Australia so far this season. So looking a little bit more familiar now with those top three players in the race of the final. But of course, Dubai's next week. So another thousand points up for grabs. Really could see a shake up to these rankings. All right, having a look over on the ATP now. And again, no change at the top with Djokovic of one. Elgris staying at number two. We do have a change with Sinner going up to number three, a career high ranking for him, pushing Medvedev down to number four. And that's because Sinner won Rotterdam, the tournament that he lost to Medvedev in last year. So Medvedev didn't play, lost all his points, and Sinner was able to take his spot. But you can see there, it's only a five point difference between those two. So that could change in the next couple weeks. Rublev, he stays at number five with Zverev at number six. Runa at number seven with her catch at number eight. We do have a change on the bottom with Diminor getting into a career high number nine in the world. Of course, he did make the top 10 just before the Australian Open. And after making it to the final of Rotterdam, he gets to go there again. This time at number nine, pushing Fritz down number 10. And Sidzi Pass drops out of the top 10 completely, which means there are no players in the top 10 that use a one-handed backhand for the first time in the history of the rankings, which is a real historic thing, of course. Federer held his own in the top 10 for a while, and Stan Wawrinka also. City Pass kind of took the mantle, but now there are no top 10 players that would use a one-handed backhand, so that's a little bit sad. Taking a look at the race of the finals now, and things are starting to take a little bit of shape. No change up the top now with Sinner at number one and still adding points to his title, and he's really opened the gap between him and Medvedev at two. Medvedev does stay at two with Zverev at three and Djokovic at four. But there is a change in the middle with Rublev and Hercatch getting pushed down thanks to Diminor, who made the final of Rotterdam. He goes up to number five, so a bit of a change there. Diminor five, Rublev six. Dimitrov doesn't move. He stays at seven and Hercatch at eight. Fritz stays at 
number nine. And Carlos Alcaraz, he drops out of the top 10 to the race of the finals, making way for Tommy Paul now. The asterisk next to their name is there because Fritz and Paul are playing in the Delray Beach final. So we don't actually know who's won that yet. We'll talk about that more next week once we get the result in. But that's the race of the finals, and we're starting to get to see a lot of familiar names in this finals race. So there you have it. That is the rankings for this week. Some big changes for the women's side. And of course, that's going to do maybe even more next week because it's the Dubai and we've got a massive tournament there as well. The race of the finals is starting to get a little interesting as well. On the men's side next week, we've only got Rio, which is a big event, but Elkris is the only one playing that. So I don't think we'll see too much change next week, maybe to the you know, top 10 for the men. But remember, Indian Wells, Miami, that's coming up very soon. And everybody's coming back for that, including Djokovic, because he hasn't played since that Australian Open semi-final against Sinner a couple of weeks ago. But let me know in the comments below. What's been the biggest shock for you in the rankings this week? What's been the most surprising thing for you? And maybe in a positive way, because Sinner getting number three in the world, it's great to see that he's up there. And now the top three guys are the three Grand Slam champions of the last 12 months. So that's fun to see as well. But they're the rankings for this week. A couple of changes there to that top 10.